Hey yo, what is up everyone? It is the Alpha J of the Alpha J Show and let's talk pain bow. As with all of my How I'd Write videos, I usually start off with explaining what I or other people who have watched that episode would have found bad. But I have a special guest with me who will aid me in explaining why pain bow could be considered an infamous episode of the new Powerpuff Girls. No. What do you mean no? Jay, listen man, we're friends, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Why? What do you mean? You see, there are a lot of things in this world that I want to do before I die. This is not one of them. Out of all of the things, all of the things that you chose for me to talk about with you, you picked this. There are 38 other episodes in season one that you could have chosen. Strong Armed, Man Up, Little Octi Lost, Tiara Trouble, Horn Sweet Horn, Road Trip, and Sister Sitter, Bubbles of the Opera, Professor Proof to Rainy Day, even the Squashening. But this? No. But a lot of people wanted me to make- I refuse. I will not talk about this episode, Jay. I've reviewed every episode of this season already. Why are you making me do it again? Every waking moment I spend discussing Painbow is an everlasting reminder of my failures. This episode is honestly the hardest thing I have ever had to talk about because there's just so much shit I have to point out. I just can't do it. I have so much more to live for. But the audience retention rate- Do you know what it's like? Tell me. Do you know what it's like to live knowing that you've witnessed your childhood heroes perform sexual dance maneuvers before your very eyes? It's agony. I've never been the same since. Don't make me do this, Jay. Please. Would you do it for a Scooby snack? Get that shit out of my face. Uno momento, por favor. So, we reached an agreement. Shadow is only going to talk about what is wrong with the episode and nothing more. He's brought up some great points off camera, or really microphone, and I have decided out of the goodness of my heart to not put him through the terror that is Painbow. Take it away, Shadow. <sighs> okay. Painbow is the fourth episode to have premiered for the Powerpuff Girls reboot. Although it's technically considered the 11th based on the official production codes, but who else besides me even keeps track of that sort of thing? It's an episode that's primarily Buttercup-centric, although her sisters, Blossom and Bubbles, do tag along for the majority of the episode. It begins in Miss Keen's classroom, in which Buttercup is seen making a mockery of her teacher's grammar lesson because she's bored and would rather be doing so many other things instead of sitting there learning about dangling participles. She's not the only one here being held against her will. Jay. Suddenly, a mystical rainbow appears in the sky from literally out of nowhere and magically hypnotizes every citizen in Townsville. Wait a minute, did I say every citizen? Sorry, I meant every citizen except for Buttercup. Why is she unaffected? How is she unaffected? I don't know. And neither does the episode. She just carries on as if nothing is even wrong when there's no reason presented to us as to how she avoids becoming a mindless pawn akin to the way her classmates have been taken over. Plot hole number one. Confused by the way her peers and teacher are acting, she proceeds to fly outside the school to have a look around and see if she can find an explanation as to what's going on. Funnily enough, she runs into Blossom, who on any other day would be exploding with joy because she got an A-plus on her school project. You know, because grades are her most defining character trait. I digress. She's upset because her teacher decided to give everyone in her class an A+, and after working for hours on her diorama, she feels it was all for naught. Bubbles also happens to be standing by, or rather, she's buried underneath about 20 kids smothering themselves in a giant hug pile, and she throws in her own two cents as well. The three decide to head home and ask the professor what's going on, but it turns out he's been affected by the rainbow too. How convenient. Again, not sure how the girls remain untouched by the rainbow's influence, especially when they stare directly at it. But hey, we've got more important things to talk about. Like... EDM references. After flying up to find the source of the rainbow, the girls end up running into the being responsible for causing it in the first place, Allegro. He's essentially just a random panda that has special powers for... some reason? It's probably the drugs. No explanation is given as to who he is, where he came from, what his motive tends to be... nothing. He's just here for the sake of being here. The episode really could have done a better job at explaining his purpose in all of this, because outside of wanting to party all the time, there's really nothing more to him besides being an obnoxious one-dimensional character. Bubbles has some lines where she spouts OMG Yas and I can't even over her adoration for the panda, while Buttercup goes around chastising her for doing so, and Blossom attempts to get down to the bottom of things by asking him about the rainbow. 
Sure enough, Allegro admits to Blossom that he is responsible for causing the rainbow to appear, but refuses to make it go away because it would ruin his, quote, chill vibe. I swear I don't write this stuff. He spawns these magical smiley faces and blasts them straight at the girls, managing to successfully hit Blossom and Bubbles square in the back of the head, thus putting them under the same influence that the rainbow had done to the rest of Townsville citizens earlier on in the episode. Again, not sure why the rainbow doesn't affect the girls because clearly they aren't immune to Allegro's magic, for lack of a better word? Why is it only happening now? Look, I'm just gonna fast forward past this part because I don't like it and everybody else already knows about it anyway, so there's no point in discussing it. Buttercup finds herself realizing that there's a time and a place for everything, and that she shouldn't have been messing with Miss Keene's class in the first place. Miss Keene was trying her best to give the most educational benefit to her students, and Buttercup took that away from her to make one good joke and two not-so-good ones. What this had to do with all of the events preceding this epiphany... Eh? So in the end, Buttercup ends up love-tapping Allegro's arms, somehow causing them to crack and break open, leaving only this weird squishy blue teddy bear thing to remain. Apparently, this is Allegro's true form. I don't really get it, but considering this episode is full of a bunch of drug references, I shouldn't really be surprised at this point. Somehow Allegro being reduced to this form sends him and his influence back through his dimensional portal in the sky, leaving the girls and Townsville behind so that everything can return to normal. Off screen, of course. The episode ends off with Buttercup being respectful in Miss Keene's classroom because of the lesson she had learned, until the last second where she decides to burst out laughing at a joke anyways, thus diminishing everything she had learned in the first place. And that just about does it for Painbow's plot summary. There, Jay. You happy? Quite happy. As you know, the only rule of my How I'd Write videos is that I must stick to the synopsis that is given to me. The synopsis goes as so. A mystical rainbow causes Townsville to become unnaturally happy, so the girls set off to find where it's coming from. The episode would start off with the narrator showing that today in the city of Townsville, people are having a bad day. Various shots of people getting into very annoying moments. Like the mayor would be opening up a can with a tab on it, but the tab breaks off, leaving the can very very hard to open without a can opener, except the mayor is in City Hall. Or Mojo Jojo firing a weapon out of Banks' windows, presumably to rob it, but because of the slow charge up of the gun, he looks directly at it, firing it in his face, with people laughing at him, him being embarrassed, and one of the onlookers to upload said Mojo Jojo's failure to the internet. And lastly, the professor waiting countless hours on tech support to fix a printer or something, only to have the very phone he uses be cut off for low battery. Generally things that are avoidable but also suck. Bubbles will be playing with a doll, based off of a hero who fights villains who essentially shoots happiness beams into people and makes them happy, with no actual effort beyond that. She would also be watching said TV show while playing with said doll. We would also see that they explain things like how rainbows work, hinting to a future solution later in the story. Buttercup would see her watching said show and go to Blossom, explaining that not only does she not like the show, but she thinks the show is stupid because it wants everyone to be happy when Buttercup is the most happy when she can go nuts and rage, showing moments here where she plays a guitar and smashes it, or when she plays pranks on other people, showing that while other people may not be happy, she's happy when she does it. Blossom would say although she would never be caught watching what Bubbles is watching, she agrees that she wants everyone to be happy, which is why she wants to run for class president when she can, hinting to a future episode. Bubbles would overhear them, just not what they say, and she would want them to join her. However, Blossom would pull the old yawn and stretch technique noting that it's almost bedtime, and rush upstairs, but not before suggesting that Buttercup said that she'd love to, pushing Buttercup into that sticky situation. Buttercup would end up having flashbacks, where she, Bubbles, and this show clash. It makes her crazy, and makes other people laugh at her when she interacts with Bubbles when she's crazed on this super cutesy TV show. The scene would then switch over to a cloud nation full of pumping electronic dance music, colorful items that usually are monochromatic, and overly elated, almost blindly optimistic people who are shown with a montage that they're always happy even in the face of a problem like one scene would show a car crash to which both sides get out of their cars hug it out and laugh walking away from their wrecked cars allegro would pop up the leader of this super happy nation strolling around his entire empire with the henchmen talking about how lovely it is here and how his goal is to make everyone happy because no one should deal with the pain of sadness his cloud nation would rise over the city of townsville and he 
would see all of the unhappy citizens as when the narrator pointed out they were having a bad day and he'd be shocked and stop the traveling cloud to say that his mission is now to make everyone here in this city happy focusing on the agony buttercup is going through playing with bubbles and watching said super cutesy tv show the next day all of the girls are at school and it zooms out to a happy cannon that is designed to beam a rainbow into the school and spread the happiness like a virus the children and teachers would spread it to their parents or spouses respectively and then they would spread it to the mailman who would spread it all around town with plumbers and doctors and policemen the press even the villains getting infected the virus would spread by looking directly into said infected person's eyes to which said eyes would form a rainbow beam of happiness to the next person however by sheer luck the girls are called to fight a big monster destroying townsville so they speed off not being hit by the initial rainbow beam due to this taking a while it would show that school is over after they finish also because the professor works at home the infection would never spread to him the girls would have a good fight with said monster which would form as an action point where this monster would come back later in the episode it is also important to note that the monster ends up retreating most likely into the ocean nearby allegro would throw a bit of a fit noting that he missed the girls but said henchman who's always happy and upbeat assures allegro that the girls would possibly get it from their parents allegro not being happy by that idea decides to make a plan to unleash the town on the girls making them happy by brute force it's also important to note that allegro is not infected by his own virus so he would be capable of feeling emotions other than happy as he is here allegro would beam his henchmen down to the girls' house and have them pose as a delivery man in a large coat the professor while skeptical takes a gift of new age coffee or tea to which upon him using it would immediately knock him out their plan would be to make sure that the girls are caught off guard the girls bring him to bed noticing this and before going to bed themselves bubbles decides to stay up and watch said show that she always likes that both blossom and buttercup really don't this time having buttercup go to bed early and push blossom into bubbles line of sight having blossom taste her own medicine late in the night we hear a huge bang and the girls wake up startled and confused they look out the window to see the entire town trying to knock down their door they zoom over to the professor who was incredibly knocked out from the new age tea or coffee upon finally knocking down their door they realize that it is the town that look hypnotized and are about to attack the girls with happiness and the girls flee away from their home confused they meet allegro in a general spot laughing evilly giving away his affiliation allegro states to the girls that they are ruining his plans to make the world happy and that they should give in to which is a slight reference to a 1950s film invasion of the body snatchers which does this exact concept just replace happy with no emotion whatsoever allegro would say things like why not choose to be happy all the time if you can he runs a world where everyone is and there's no problem the cartoon would then cut over the two friends breaking into a bank and taking money the girls would respond negatively to that saying that even if they are happy they aren't being good and there's a difference between being happy because you are happy and being happy because someone hypnotized you bubbles would go to stop them while in another scene more hypnotized people would end up appearing as if they're going to crash their cars into each other but neither looks like they're going to stop allegro would explain that it is their happiness that counts and if they're happy then allegro's happy buttercup would go to stop that before blossom goes after allegro who proves to be a big fight allegro while on defense instructs the town who are hypnotized to go after the professor with blossom getting off allegro's back to fetch the professor in time however it would prove to be too late as the professor is caught hypnotized and under the happy hypno spell all of the three girls would be shown to struggle until bubbles would think what would x hero do referring back to the tv show she watches and that kicks her straight into action she manages to close off the bank vault before anyone can get in while going to help buttercup by putting those wheel locks on cars that they may use blossom tries to confront the professor but while distracted she gets hit by the happy laser which makes her drop to the ground defeated buttercup going over the blossom would also get hit with said laser bubbles all alone and with the card stacked against her looks up and remembers rainbows are a refraction of water and light like she learned on the show and that's when she notices the big cloud in the sky upon rushing to it allegro dashes in front of her and instructs a giant monster from earlier to come and attack her to which said giant monster would rise up from the ocean she'd see that in front of her is allegro and behind her is the giant monster both rushing at her said monster would shoot either acid or goo or something and by skill she dodges it making it hit allegro and that gives her a clear view of the cloud nation bubbles will get really close to the cloud nation and use her sonic scream which makes the entire cloud nation shake and crumble and eventually fall breaking the beam 
and nullifying the trance put on everyone, from the town, to the girls, to the former Allegro Nation citizens. Allegro, defeated, turns to Bubbles with the monster and says that it's not the last time they have heard of him, taking the monster sitting on his shoulder, and both monster and villain run off into the distance. The girls would thank Bubbles for her bravery, and she'd say she got it from the show she watched. And this would lead into Buttercup and Blossom admitting that they never gave the show a chance, as they saw it as cutesy girly nonsense. However, upon watching the show, they realize that it isn't that bad. The episode of said show they watch focus on a monster and a man fusing to become a super monster. The episode of said show they watch focus on a monster and a man fusing together to become a super monster, which would lead into the ending scene. The episode would end with Allegro fusing with the monster, creating a giant force of happiness that is implied to come back soon. And once again, the day is saved, thanks to the Powerpuff Girls. So what do you think of this story? Any criticisms are welcome, feel free to tear this apart. Let me know what you think of Painbow as an episode, the original episode, in the comments down below. Make sure to follow Shadow Streak. He was a great help in making this video be what it is. Follow me at the Alpha J Show and go into my request video for any topic you think I should cover. If you really like this video, you should check out Shadow Streak's channel. He talks about the Powerpuff Girls, and if you really do like this video, you'll love his content. Make sure to subscribe and feel free to consider my Patreon. As always, I hope your time was well spent. And Alpha out.